joining us now, my friend of too many years to count, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, <laughs> who has been doing the rounds. I mean, is there any show that you haven't been on? I swear I saw you on Celebrity Chef earlier this morning. My goodness, you've been everywhere. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, Laura. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> the most important question, of course, doesn't have anything to do with Obamacare or the executive order. Did you and Ryan coordinate the ties last night? I mean, couldn't one of your staffers have slipped you a, <laughs> a, a different color before the address? My goodness, the two of you look like twins. <laughs> <laughs> I, heard, I heard one of the late night shows said that we'd gone to a two for one sale somewhere. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and then I and I, I and I also didn't. I also don't envy you having to sit back there and like if you have to itch your nose or you know if you if the you know, I'm like, oh, you know, you know it just it's, you every, know, everyone's looking uh, at you the whole time. You know, such it was very humbling for me to to be there uh, with Speaker Ryan, but I, I promise you, no one was looking at either one of us. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it was a, it was a great speech, but more importantly. It was a great night for America. The president articulated uh, the very same agenda that he ran on, uh, an agenda to to, uh, to repeal and replace Obamacare, to rebuild our military, to, uh, to, to reduce taxes and have better trade deals that will create jobs and opportunity, infrastructure. He, you know, I, I just think it, it, what the American people saw last night, in a very real sense, is the president that I have the privilege of serving with every day he is a he is a leader who knows where he wants to take this country he laid out that pathway and i think the response you're seeing all across the country this morning is is what happens when when president trump is able to move beyond the media filter speak directly to the american people they heard his mind they heard his heart and they obviously like what they heard. Was there a decision made before the speech was written or drafted to take a new, a slightly, uh, I think, more aspirational tone uh, in this address? The, the writing seemed much different to me than the inaugural address, both in style and pacing, in delivery. I mean, as an old speechwriter myself, I pay attention to those things. Uh, was there a definitive decision made to, to strike a different note? Well, I think the president very much wanted this decision to be about the agenda and about the future. But he was also determined to, to make it clear that we've, we've been making progress literally since November the 8th, Laura, that we've seen companies that were planning to build factories outside the country that have, that have canceled those plans or creating jobs in the United States. Other companies are expanding in a clear vote of confidence uh, in the leadership and the agenda that President Trump uh, was elected uh, to advance, but but clearly, what the president wanted to convey here uh, was was his vision for the future uh, of the country, and and uh, and to really challenge not only Republicans in Congress, but but Democrats and people all across the country to come together around a vision uh, for for a more secure and a more prosperous America. Is there a reason it seems like there's another delay in this uh, executive order on the uh, temporary travel ban? We, we were promised the new order last week, and then it, we, it was kicked into this week. Now it looks like another delay. What, what's happening there? I, I think it's, you know, I, I don't know if it's a delay. I think there there was an expectation and there was some discussion in the media that it might be out the middle of the, this week, but but we'll be bringing forward that executive order. But making let's be let's be clear: the president uh, and the administration believe that the first executive order was fully within his authority as president of the United States to take such steps as are necessary uh, to ensure the safety of the American people. That being said, the president has directed the team uh, to. Look at the Ninth Circuit decisions. Look at other issues, other inputs, and, and and at least advance another executive order that will put into place the kind of things that are beyond dispute and are not a subject of legal controversy. And 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 I would I would expect that that's going to be forthcoming in the days ahead. And would that would that mean that you would either subtract or add to the number of countries that are part of that ban? Well, I, I think uh, you know I'll let I'll let the administration finish its work on that and and make that public. But th what you heard last night, I think it's one of the reasons last night's speech resonated with with millions of Americans. Laura, is this president is putting a priority 
on the safety and security of the American people. That, that begins with we're going to take the actions and remain determined to accomplish uh, efforts uh, to secure our borders, to ensure that people are not coming into this country who represent a threat to the American people, is, is commitment to internal enforcement, uh, more border agents, more enforcement internally with immigrations and customs, support for law enforcement. And this is a president who is committed uh, to the, the safety of the American people, and, and right after that, uh, committed to doing everything that we can to put uh, American jobs and American workers first. Uh, back in 2010, you were described by many, including me, as a deficit hawk, that you, the way you saw government was that it was one of our sacred responsibilities not to pile future debt uh, and big deficits on um, uh, future generations. And yet in this uh, this budget that we're looking at, at least the outlines of it and the priorities the president struck last night, not clear how we're going to be trimming this deficit after we've had some success in doing so with these sequester cuts in previous years. Have you gone from a deficit hawk to a deficit dove? Uh, no, not in the least. And, and, and let me say the budget outline, the president's full budget will be out in a few weeks. The budget outline that was sent to Capitol Hill earlier this week is deficit neutral. The, the president uh, is calling for a historic increase in military spending, which, Laura, you and I both know we desperately need. Uh, we, we literally, there's testimony before the Congress even this year about uh, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard not having the equipment, not having the resources they need. The president is determined to rebuild our military but the outline included commensurate budget cuts in domestic spending to offset that, that $54 billion increase that he's calling for. That would be the largest increase in military spending in a single year uh, since the Reagan administration. But the president's determined to do it. But, you know, the whole backstop of dealing with a nearly $20 trillion national debt, in, in President Trump's view, is growth. The, the, you know, when you when you have a one percent, a two percent economy as we've had over the last several years uh, under under uh, President Obama, you're never going you're never going to have an opportunity to meet the obligations of today or reduce deficits and debt uh, and the burden of that on our children and grandchildren. President Trump laid out a plan last night to cut taxes across the board, to cut business taxes, to have better and smarter trade. And so deals. is that how you'll pay for the, pay for this, pay for this, it, jobs. Uh, you're going to pay for the additional spending, you think, through the additional tax revenues that are coming in? Because, again, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that the Republicans don't get themselves right. in that bind that they got themselves in. And you were there, Vice President Pence, in 2006. Yeah. I mean, you were cited in, in so many, in by Reason Magazine, by all these other publications, and I wrote about it at the time. You were just among a few on Capitol Hill who were saying to the Bush administration, watch what you're doing on this spending. This deficit spending is going to get you in a heap of trouble. Then we went on to lose the midterm elections in 2006 and lose in 2008 because we lost our credibility on being, on being deficit hawks and being really smart with money. So and in the end, people have to believe that these numbers are really going to add up to a, to a neutral, uh, right. deficit neutral stance. Well, you're nice to remember all that. And I'll tell you what, uh, the, the President of the United States, as you heard him reflect last night, on the tens of millions of dollars he saved taxpayers on the F-35 contract, uh, he, is, he is demanding that our, our, our budget team and that Congress sharpen their pencils and make sure that, that we find our savings. But ultimately, I, I truly do believe that, that meeting the obligations of today Dealing with that mountain range of debt is all dependent on getting this economy moving again, and and uh, and the president's vision, and the president's vision for rolling back excessive red tape and regulation, which he's already been implementing, cutting taxes, having smarter and tougher trade deals, and and making the the kinds of uh, the kinds of investments in infrastructure that'll support jobs. But, but I, I just want to be very clear on this, Vice President Pence. Are you willing to yeah. to go uh, and run a deficit for a year or two to push these other infrastructure and military spending priorities forward? Well, I, I think it's important that the budget that we send is fiscally responsible. And again, that outline, just so you're clear, Laura, the outline the president. 
uh, sent to Capitol Hill this week has a historic increase in military spending, but all, all of those increases are offset by domestic cuts. Now, there are a lot of people complaining. Not going to want those cuts. That's cuts. the problem. We're, no one wants the cuts. We're, we're, we're ready to have that fight. Okay. But I think at the, at the end of the day, repealing and replacing Obamacare, which, of course, is, is a pathway toward reforming, as, as Speaker Ryan said yesterday, that, that's, a, that's a pathway toward reforming Medicaid by allowing states to have the resources and flexibility to meet the needs of their mm-hmm. most vulnerable citizens in new and innovative ways. Let, let's All of that is a pathway toward prosperity, and prosperity mm-hmm. is a pathway to fiscal solvency. The, the, everybody was all at Twitter uh, over at Fox last night on, before we got on the special report panel about those comments that uh, President uh, Trump made about a possible immigration deal in the future. And a lot of the, the people who knocked on doors for Donald Trump are like, "You got to be kidding me! He's gonna now, he's gonna now like push, put this in priority number one or two or three or four when we have all these other things to do." What can you tell my listeners who want the rule of law, the focus of this administration on immigration, about the president's willingness to do an overarching immigration bill and working with the Democrats on that? Well, the. The one thing I can tell you I've learned in knowing the president for now almost a year is that he's a man of his word. And what the American people heard last night, including the tens of millions of Americans who supported our ticket, is that the president laid out his agenda from repealing, replacing Obamacare, tax relief in the military. But he laid out a very clear agenda on ending illegal immigration. He, he talked about building a wall. He talked about border security. He talked about our efforts already at enhanced internal enforcement, more border agents. and He also talked about deporting people, though, right? I mean, I don't mean to interrupt, but he also talked he about did. deporting people. Well, he absolutely did, and we, had, and we had the families there that had lost loved ones at the hand of, of illegal immigrants. You know, the president is putting a priority on, on the rule of law and enforcing the laws of this country. You remember that stirring line in the speech about upholding the laws of this country. Yeah, laws and, are you can't come in the country illegally now. Office, I mean, you can't come in the country. That's illegal. To give, voice, to give voice to the victims. That's right. But I think if you go back, if you go back to the speech that he gave in Phoenix, uh, and and you laid that against the state, uh, the, the uh, state of the nation speech last night, you would mm-hmm. see what the president said in Phoenix on on ending illegal immigration is what he said last night. Got to do focus it. on getting criminal aliens out of the country. After all of that's done, I think his phrase was, we'll see. Mm-hmm. But we're going to focus on border security, internal enforcement, the rule of law, and getting criminal aliens out of this country so they can no longer jeopardize our families. That's the focus. And Vice President Pence, finally, because I know you got to run, the uh, Obamacare repeal yeah. and replace, so critical. So many big yeah. parts of this legislation. The president's right. It is complicated. The president promised a repeal and replace. Initially, it was going to be on day one of his presidency. Uh, and now it was kicked off to the first week of March, and we're, uh, there seems to be a lot of competing ideas still on Capitol Hill. Are you all in the White House going to help drive this narrative? Are you going to let Paul Ryan carry the ball on this the, uh, on this entire repeal and replace uh, uh, plan? Last night, the president made a commitment to the American people that he made in the course of the campaign that we have to repeal and replace Obamacare. Uh, he made the case, which I think was very important, and, and you've done this uh, all across the country now for years, Laura, like no one else. But he laid out he laid out the flaws of Obamacare, the, the reality of it, regardless of what the spin is in some quarters of the national media, the reality of this failed policy that's that's uh, that's uh, just nothing but a long series of broken promises. But then he did. What, what great presidents do, and that is he said, now I've set the goal, now I'm going to give you the principles and my expectations about what that looks like. And, and you heard him describe those principles. That now creates a framework for our entire team and all of our allies in Congress to come together and, and replace Obamacare with, uh, with, with the kind of uh, the kind of measures that will reduce the cost of health. But is it just tinkering with it, or is it? Are we going to keep the individual oh, no. man? Are we going to pe- keep the uh, pre-existing conditions in? Are we going to keep the you know uh, you know the Kissinger plan to your twenty-six thing in? I mean, th- those are things that are very popular, yet they're well, very well, expensive. Let's, 
Well, let's be clear on the individual mandate. You heard the president say last night that mandating that every American buy health insurance was never the right idea. It was never the solution. And and so repealing Obamacare and that core of Obamacare is central to what we need to do. The the way we the, what the president's vision and the specifics that he laid out last night is you you lower the cost of health insurance, but you can deal with pre existing conditions and there's a mechanism to be able to do that. You you can deal with some of these other issues, resources and flexibility to the states on Medicaid, but the center of the president's vision is allowing Americans to purchase health insurance across state lines. The way we buy life insurance, the way we buy car insurance, that'll create a national marketplace, drive down the cost, increase the number of choices. Uh, That's the American way and the free market way to meet our health. Are you up? Are you um, open to killing off the uh, antitrust protections that insurance companies get under the McCarran Ferguson Act? Would that be on the table? Yes or no? I think uh, I'll leave that to all the legal experts about what's involved and what's not. The president's vision is. We want the American people to be able to buy health insurance across state lines. The power of the marketplace can drive down costs, improve the availability right. of health care coverage. That will lead to a healthier America and a healthier American economy. Vice President Pence, I'm sending you a tie. I know you can't accept it because of ethical rules, but I'm sending you a new t- tie today. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Vice President Mike Pence on The Laura Ingram Show.